We have one team has punched the ticket already to East Hartford. Another one will be punched in a couple hours' time. Back at Rutgers, or back for Rutgers, North Carolina, rather, in Hempstead. If you look at the bracket, that team was Virginia. Just moments ago, dispatching of Georgetown 14-3. So the Cavaliers, once again, in championship weekend, they await the winner of North Carolina and Rutgers. And, of course, tomorrow in South Bend, Maryland, Notre Dame, and Duke and Loyola will round it out. Alongside Paul Carcaterra, I'm Chris Cotter. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the first game. Second game looks like it's going to be seriously enjoyable because both these teams can get up and down and fill it up. Yeah, and we'll start with Carolina. They're the number one seed in this tournament, rightfully so. They also have the top-rated offense nationally. So if you like offense and offense sells, stay put. And you're going to want to stay put to watch Chris Gray. He's a Wharton finalist for North Carolina. Everything around the heels revolves around him. He's a jack-of-all-trades, master of all. Deceptive Dodger does so well with slick stick skills. But it's his passing ability. When you play with Chris Gray, everyone eats. Keep your head up. Keep your stick ready. He'll get it to you. Off ball, he's sneaky. He finds seams in the defense and stamps with creativity behind the backs. And then you got the deep ball. Bam! Chris Gray checks every single box for me you look at the scoring from chris gray and you mentioned how everybody eats clark a veteran midfield unit for this north carolina team william perry tanner cook justin anderson all seniors they've been together forever seemingly and they work so well together you throw in guys like nikki solomon and brian cameron and jacob kelly down at attack and you've got depth of scoring and a lot of different ways that that man joe bresci can beat you when you talk about rutgers Okay, you got to talk about this NASCAR offense. I've been hearing it all year. I need you to explain this thing to me. Well, the NASCAR offense actually starts on the defensive end with Colin Kirst, who's one of the best netminders in the nation. When he makes a save, instantly he's thinking offense. He'll scatter outside the crease area. He throws dimes of outlet passes. And then their defensive middies are guys like Tommy Coyne, who is an ex-attackman who can play in transition and spot feed teammates. This offense is scary, but in the settled situation, they have a three-headed monster on attack. Kieran Mullins, the facilitator, the quarterback, point guard, tremendous passer, always has his head up, and he finds Adam Sherry Lombides, the crafty Canadian finisher from the left side, 25-year-old, seventh-year senior. He can sling it with the left, and then this beast from the right. An absolute cannon. Connor Kirst puts goalies to sleep. Cheryl Embiidis, Mullins, and Kirst have combined for 602 career points. It's absolutely ridiculous. They're combined 73 years of age, and so they bring the experience at the attack line that makes Rutgers go. And you mentioned Colin Kirst, one of the Kirst brothers, in cage last week. He had an outstanding first-round game against Lehigh, and he sees a lot of rubber and doesn't mind. He's a Big Ten Specialist of the Year, about 13 and a half saves per game. It's, it's part of his game. He's one of five boys. He's the only goalie. Everyone else in the cursed home plays attack. So you know in the backyard he was getting pounded with shots, but it pays off in big moments. He had a big one last week. He's going to need a big one this week to shut down this vaunted North Carolina offense. I haven't even mentioned Colin Freed. He's probably in the middle of that scrum right, the scrum right there with the North Carolina Tar Heels. He was a guy that we didn't expect to see in a game like this. Right at the beginning of the year, we thought it was going to be Kane Johnson, but Colin Freed, the freshman, has been great. He has. And he's got ice in his veins. You'll see him in the crease area, loose as can be. He's dancing to music in between breaks. Got he's the from Long Island. Yeah. yeah. This is home for him. This is a spot any young lacrosse player from Long Island aspires to be in. The quarterfinals, back home. Joe Bresci, back in the NCAA tournament. Don't forget, he won it all in 2016, Clark. Then the next year, he had to win the ACC tournament just to get in, and it's been a couple of years since he's been back, and now he's back. And for Brian Brecht, it's been a lot longer. You talk about a guy who's been at Rutgers now for 10 seasons, knocking on the door a bunch of times, finally got in. Like Kevin Warren at Georgetown, the administration, patience, it's paying off. And 
Rutgers with their first playoff win last week against Lehigh down in Charlottesville since 1990. The face off, Zazu Genio and Zach Tucci. And Tucci was not, not afraid to pull the trigger himself. Took a shot, but it didn't get the cage as it was deflected. Now Bobby Russo, you see how quick and uh, Ethan Wall and how quick these long stick middies and defensemen want to get the ball up the field. Now it's a team that can mask the face off deficiency as well, if not better than any, because they do it with really solid in-between-the-lines play. They clear so cleanly those 50-50 ground balls. The stat that means the most to me in this game is goals off of face-off wins. That's what matters when you're playing Rutgers. Up top to Sprott. That's Adam Sherrill and Beatty's the Canadian. Here's Kirst. Big physical presence. Shoots just wide. Yeah, and they like him. He's an attack, and they like him up top Thank because at Villanova, where he played and graduated from, the 50th senior, played midfield. So he's really comfortable in that kind of offensive set. Ryan Gallagher, former attackman, now playing midfield. Green saw that one, so he gets involved early. <laughs> 24, Will Bowen. Just saw his future team about a half hour ago. He's going to transfer to Georgetown as a graduate transfer after this season. But he hopes to lead North Carolina to a national championship before he leaves. <laughs> now we'll see Carolina six on six. Nikki Solomon, young man out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. This, this <laughs> midfield unit, rather, has been together for so long and played so many games together. Perry, Cook, Anderson. Here's Perry. Here's Chris Gray. Now behind. Look at the speed. Shot and Kirst Con Con is there. Colin Kirst is there to make the first save of the game. Sounds like he made it Gentleman with number three, foot, That was a big-time stop. Will Perry throws gas from that spot. That's what he wants. And the, the high set of the six on six, three and white, loves to just fire it. And that relentless ride from North Carolina ends up getting the ball right back to the heels. Something of interest right now, this midfield of fifth-year seniors, Cook, Perry, and Anderson. Right now, Tanner Cook's on the sideline. Mm -hmm. He's in full equipment, got his uniform, he's pacing back and forth. Cole Herbert's in right now. He's a freshman, a big-time recruit, but he's not Tanner Cook. Just from a, a familiarity standpoint, these guys have played so many minutes together. You see it, uh, Cole Herbert, number six, on the far side for North Carolina. Still 40 seconds on this possession to shoot, so plenty of time for Perry. Perry thought about finding with his right. Now brings it back. Plenty to shoot for Solomon and company. On Kamish, the short stick defensive midfielder. Get a little bit of a step. And a save again by Kirst. Top on number three, William Perry. The save by Colin Kirst. Textbook clear by Rutgers. And D-Mitty Kamish, did he stay on the field? No, he comes off. So keep an eye on that throughout the game, whether Rutgers keeps their defensive midfielders on on the offensive end to try and trap North Carolina offensive players on that end of the field. Stop. Sherilyn Beatty's quickly to curse. Rutgers moving it quickly. Knobloch, question of the year in the Big Ten, number 27. Frank Winetti trying to work his way to the goal. Can't get there. So 20 seconds to shoot for Rutgers. Mullins. Slide comes, now backs away. Far side of Cheryl Embiid. He's had a hard time gathering it. Back to his left. He scores! 
Wow. Wow. <laughs> NASCAR is all about quick offense, but you got to be able to strike in the six-on-six six set if you're Rutgers. A pipe into a quick stop for Colin Kirst. Kieran Mullins, the quarterback. Will Bones starts beating on Sherry Lombardi. The ability to get a shot off with pressure and own a corner. That was picture perfect. And we saw in the first game of our doubleheader, Clark, all the breaks going against Georgetown. How about that break here on the goal, off the pipe and right into Colin Kirst cross to start that fast break and to get the offensive possession that Rutgers needed to score the goal. And the crowd on their feet for that one as Duhenio wins the faceoff. Crowd's going nuts, but it's also like... The bloodline of your team is Adam Sherilyn Beatties, right? He's a seventh-year senior, been through three major knee surgeries, the COVID year. He's seen it all. I mean, he came in as a freshman with guys like Jules Henningberg, who's been a pro for three years, right? Like, he's waited so long. This program has waited so long for this moment. Tommy Floyd checks back. Andrew Kim, transfer from Syracuse. Now on the field, number 15 for Rutgers. The diminutive Ryan Gallagher, former attackman. Plays midfield now to invert often. Back there with Mullins. Curse is always, boy, he was stepping in before he even caught that pass, wasn't he? Yeah, shooters do that. He had an eye on the cage before he even caught that. Mullins, quick pass. Sherman Beatty loses his foot and gets it back. So 13 to shoot, plenty of time. Here comes Kirsch. Help comes from Gresham. Found a man inside, and Cheryl and Beatty just couldn't squeeze it. Yeah, that was a good pass by <laughs> Kirsch. <Kirsten. laughs> Not typical of Cheryl and Beatty, who's from Canada and played a ton of box across. The hands are his strength. That would have pretty much been automatic right in front, too, if you had it. All the same, one to nothing Rutgers here early. Chance to see Connor McCarthy, number 32, transfer from Princeton. Second midfield unit now for North Carolina, including Henry Schertzinger. They've really come on in the second half of the year. McCarthy got his hands free, and he scores to even things up. A high bouncer with velocity. When you shoot like the low bouncers against Colin Kirst, he gobbles it up. It's too easy. But when you use the turf and it's coming off quick, no goalie's making that stop. Initial instincts of a goalie is to drop low on the low shot, and the high bouncer counters any type of strength Kirst can have low. Coach Breck talking to his team over there on the sideline. He's the middies. What he wants to see, Duhenio now battling with Tucci. This is a good sign for Rutgers. They're winning ground balls on face-offs in the middle of the field. Horn gets possession of the Scarlet Knights. Here comes Knobloch and Sprott. Remember, I was at a Rutgers lacrosse practice three, four years ago, and Tommy Coyne was actually an early graduate from high school, right? And he was a skinnier attackman. Now you look at him as a short stick defender with, with some serious power and strength. Curse, speaking of power and strength, tried to muscle his way in, but was knocked off. That time a combination effort. That's three turnovers for Rutgers. Carolina looking to make him pay. McCarthy scored on the last offensive trip for North Carolina. Get a good chance to see Alex Trippi. He's part of that second midfield unit, too, that is really starting to play well together. It took him a while to gel and for Coach Bresci to find the right combination, but he thinks he's found it with this group.
McCarthy. He'll back his way in. Can't get it going. Nice job by Zach Franskowiak on the defensive end of the 26. Scherzinger now. Goal line extended. That's a heck of a move. And he just couldn't put it past. Shot by number two. Colin Henry Kurt. Scherzinger. Yeah, Scherzinger with a beautiful, aggressive, plant foot type move. But he came out of that with his left hand. If he switched it quickly to the right, changes his angle. Here's Gray. Now he's got a mismatch here on Kamish. Can he make him pay? The slide comes with Garrett Bullock. Now four to shoot for North Carolina. Got to make something happen in a hurry, and they don't. That's going to be a shot clock violation. And now Rutgers will look to move quickly. And they are apt to do to curse. This cursed Bowen matchup. I mean, that is a tremendous amount of beef. <laughs> right. It was some collisions this afternoon in the heat here in Hempstead. Temperatures expected to touch 90 degrees this afternoon. We do have a little bit of a breeze, so that's some help to the fans. But the fans are just excited that are here in attendance to see some across. It could be 190 degrees. They wouldn't care. Nice and cool. The James C. Metzger Hall. Sanguine Eddie now. The slide comes to him. Here's Mullins on Cam Macri. That's an interesting matchup, too. Two smaller players, quick. Cursed up front. Knobloch will get an opportunity. Gets a better angle. His shot was deflected, though. Out of there comes Creed. Over 39, Colin Creed. Will Bowen with the clear. North Carolina sets up on their end. One-to-one -one game here. We've had end-to-end -end action, though, in the first 10 minutes of this quarterfinal number two. Virginia advanced early on in the day. Tomorrow, Maryland and Notre Dame and Loyola and Duke. Anderson. Opted not to take the shot. Now a tough angle. That was Kelly on the far side. Shot by number nine, Jacob I'm Kelly. anxious to see if Tanner Cook, 77 and white. I see him on the sidelines. He's got a ball in his stick right now. It looks like he's getting ready to get into action, but haven't seen him yet. Cole Herbert with the ball right now has filled in for him. Solomon had a wide open look. He couldn't quite test Kirst. And Tanner Cook, Chris, he, he kind of occupies that same spot as Charlie Bertrand does for Virginia. He's a big load on the left side and, and can play the, the low wing and, and is a, a matchup nightmare. Perry. Off target. Going to stay with North Carolina, though. 13 to shoot for the heels. Kelly got a decent look. Now it's just eight to shoot. That's Tanner Cook, number 77. Late in the season, he battled some injuries. But the expectation was to see 77 on the field today. Right. Perry trying to make something happen with the shot clock winding down. Another shot clock violation. And look at the Rutgers bench. I asked you what you expected in the first game from this game, and I don't think shot clock yeah, violation no. was one of those things. No, but as much as Rutgers bench will go nuts on goals, they've been hearing about the Carolina offense all week long, right? Like, how yeah. many goals is this team going to score? It's number one rated offense in the nation. So defensive stops, those are juice. Only North Carolina's 19th shot clock violation this season, and they've had two in this game. So here comes Mullins with Ross Scott. Scott, Reed just got a piece of that one, just enough. Elbow. 
Wow, that was a shoulder that Sprock put in a little better there to give himself a little bit of room. Try to get it over the top to Sprock, and the pass was deflected. Ball number 60, Sean Morris. Four turnovers now for Rutgers. Here we go. Who is it? Who is it? Looks like Rutgers was trying to play a little five on five, a little nickel, a little hangman there by trying to keep a defensive player for where North Carolina was rather on their on the on their side, but substitutions come in. Gray. Here's Gray working on Rooster. That's a good matchup. He shoots. Hurst is there. Goes Shot by to make the save. That's three on the day so far. And now his brother puts it in play for the Scarlet Knights. Staying on offensively. One trap out trippy on the defensive side. That's what he wants to do for Rutgers. Number one is not a defensive player. Knobloch working on Bresci. Slide comes to him. Behind the cage to Mullins. Hamish. He got his hands free. Slide has to come to him, but he gets back to his left. And Krieg is there to make the stop. Trippy's been on the field a long time. He's going to take a breather quickly. Carolina opts not to attack quickly. They'll slow things down with Anderson. They look to attack Ethan Rawls. Spins, but had nowhere to go. Still, though, Kelly is there to pick up the loose ball. Final three seconds, Perry's going to have to let it go. He gets a shot, and Kirsch makes the save. Shot Listen to this crowd here. Rutgers Nation, the Jersey boys and girls on their feet. One apiece after one. We expected a lot of excitement. We're getting it. Maybe we expected more goals. But I'll take what we're getting here. We're all even after one. Last week, Rutgers defeated Lehigh 12 to 5, and they dominated that game. And a big part of that was goalie Colin Kerr. Yeah, it was the Kerr show. He was playing against his younger brother, Attackman, from Lehigh, Cole Kerr. But him and his older brother, Connor, they had the answer. Last week for Carolina, it was the Chris Gray Show. Broke the single-season record for points in a season at North Carolina. Etched his name with some of the great ones. And Michelle Kirst was on hand down in Charlottesville. For a special moment, three boys playing in the same game. It was an amazing moment for a woman of such great strength. Lost her husband, Kyle, who played goalie for Rutgers in 1990, the last time they were in the playoff, too, for a win. Yeah, the last time they won a game back in 1990, and they won last week, and they went a good start here today against the number one overall seed, North Carolina. Colin Kirst with four saves in that first quarter. for Rutgers. A little Bowen on him. Now Bowen will make a switch. That puts him right up top. Here's Gallagher charging towards the goal. Hurst. 
Little ahead of steam here. Gets by Bowen. Slide comes. Brock quickly over to Ross Scott. Inside. Reed was there. Call by number 34, Ryan like Gallagher. Reed's body just getting in the way. That big body. That was a great opportunity for Rutgers inside. Gallagher with the ball right now, and Scott five in red. Nice change of pace. Both former attackmen in high school. They feel really comfortable behind the net. Speaking of which, here's Sherilyn Beatty's now. He'll come up one-on-one. -on -one. Tries to get to his hands. Doesn't strong hand. Now the ball was rolling a little bit through the crease. But Krieg was able to go down and pick it up. Saw it. And it's a good thing because that might have been headed to the other side of the line. Rutgers and their defense have answered the bell in the first quarter. Defending Chris Gray, Tuarton finalist. And when you defend Chris Gray, you got to start defending him off the ball because he's so slippery and slick away from the ball. McCarthy, though, off the pipe. He was looking for number two on the day. Scherzinger tried to keep it on that side of the field. Didn't necessarily have to do that, though, with the pipe. He could have gotten possession on the defensive side and still kept it. A good effort though yeah and kind of like trained behavior right yeah and it's always an over and back unless it hits the pipe there now shirts and he gets a little bit of space great falling down Stop was made by Kirsten. you see when he comes out of that dodge he has all those different release points there he was low to low I've seen him with so many different types of shots and Lance Tillman gets involved. So McCarthy and Tillman are your two goal scorers for North Carolina. I love the upside of Tillman. Denver, Colorado native. Saw his parents at the hotel this morning. He told me he picked up his first lacrosse stick as a four-year-old, and he's never let it down. What a move. Known for his quickness, his first step, and ability to hit pay dirt. Played at Valor Christian in Colorado, one of the top programs out there. Now Andrew Tire at the face-off X. Get a procedure call against the Henio for North Carolina possession. Tire will evacuate. Justin Anderson will come on. Recently a father. Congratulations to Justin Anderson. Number 21 for North Carolina. Senior from Las Vegas. One of the captains of this team. Baby girl, Scarlett June. Herbert. Can't get it to Gray. The Gray cracks it. Now comes off the pick. He's open. Wow, that's dangerous. Clean Bruce up the pick Bruce game, Bruce. right? You're going to switch or you're going to stay with it, right? If, and if you get caught in the middle, you're done. That's a wipe the sweat off your brow moment if you're Coach Breck. Herbert. Well, to shoot for Perry, comes up field, nothing there. This is going to be a shot and a goal. Anderson was wide open on the far side, and he took advantage. Take notice of 21 and White from the outside. He can hammer it. 25-year-old, spent a couple years in Chile on a Mormon mission. The maturity is off the charts. I've spoken to him a few times this season. Floored by the way that he leads this team. And everything that he does on and off the field is inspiring. There's a look at Justin, the new dad. Daughter Scarlett June. 
big, big smile on his face. I mean, when he announced to his team in the fall that he was expecting a baby, the whole team like rallied around him. I saw the video, it was amazing. He basically told him, you're all gonna be uncles. <laughs> Violation against Andrew Tyre. First of the half for North Carolina on the third violation of each and every half, the 30-second penalty. Sanguinetti for Rutgers, going up against the Shorty Brescia. Now here's Kirst. Over quickly to Scott. Scott attacks the short stick midfielder. Nothing doing. Now he gets free. Boy, just pops that one over the top. Thirty seconds for Luckett to shoot. Sherilyn Beatty. That's patented. Didn't get enough on it though, as it was deflected. Sanguinetti now coming up field. We get a whistle. The officials want to discuss something here. Now all three of them want to get together. Thomas Holland, C. Rayburn, and Christopher DeFelice are officials today. Let's see if we can get an explanation. So we're working on the shot clock, adding two seconds. So from 19 to 21. Knobloch. Scott. Carolyn Beatties. That hit somebody. Yeah, Scott by number three. eight. That's Carolyn Beatties. Great ground ball. Look at Bowen. That's three block shot by Carolina on Carolyn Beatties alone. Cheryl and Beatty's is like, I love hockey season, the playoffs and everything, but this is why I got away from hockey in Canada. You know, it's an interesting development with Tanner Cook being injured the last few weeks, lower body injury, didn't play against Duke in the final regular season game of the year, and then last week against Monmouth getting some rest. They didn't want to disrupt the second midfield. So they put Herbert at the first midfield and, and, and give some, some continuity in terms of uh, of this second midfield to keep those big guns like Scherzinger and, and Trippy who play together and McCarthy, right? Like Herbert was like that fourth guy in the rotation. He's on the first midfield now. Here comes Knobloch. He'll shoot. Reed goes down and steals it. Now will North Carolina go quickly the other way? Scherzinger, who missed a great opportunity on the other end, brings it back in the North Carolina offensive territory. Here's a look at this first midfield now, and you have Cole Herbert, and you might think, oh, McCarthy's that next guy up, right? Maybe their fourth best midi put him in there, but they want that second midfield to continue to have success, so Herbert fills this hole for Tanner Cook. Here's Anderson. Scored moments ago, now behind to Gray. Tillman, what a move. First goes down to get it, but we're going to get a flag. We're going to push in the back here. He's quick. Yeah, Zero he's got that right. bench quick. fired up, yeah. too. Yeah, draw a foul. Let our extra man and Chris Gray get a crack at it. Guilty of the infraction, so it'll be a 30-second man-up opportunity for North Carolina. Just the timing of that's bad, right? Yeah, you, you have him where you want. He had no angle. He's probably stepping in the crease. 
There's your man, and Kirst is there to rob him, though. Tanner Cook comes in right where you wanted him on the far post, and Kirst denies him. I told you during the break, he's going to play man up, right? Just the way his body language on the, on the sideline and having a ball in his stick. Rom as he tried to get it to Sherilyn Beatties, and Sherilyn Beatties ends up with the ball in his cross. So it's three to one here, Cart. We're about midway through the second quarter. This is about as much action as you're going to see in a four-goal game midway through the second quarter, maybe yeah. ever. Well, you have the goalies, right? Colin Kirst is as good as any goalie out there. He can be the counter to this frightening Carolina offense. Now Cheryl Lombides. Gallagher spins back. Boy. Another shot blocked before it got to the cage. You're going to be some bruises. Yep. Some bruises. Soaking the body them, man. Tonight. Soaking them. There's a goal. Cheryl Lombides again. I love his energy. Moments ago before he shot that, he ran past the Rutgers bench. Waving his arms in the air. Let's go. We've seen two next level Ricks by eight and red. But to get that opportunity, Kirst has to stand tall. He's answered the bell. And the Canadian lefty sniper banging it. Quarterfinal game, Chris Conner, Paul Carcaterra. Colin Kirst was great last week. He's been great so far today. You can't rattle him, right? He's just so smooth. Cold as ice, man. Just gobbles up anything low. McCarthy beat him on a high bouncer, but if you go with those low bouncers, just, just clear the ball. Just get it out. And then he just stuffs Tanner Cook, who's seeing his first action in two-plus games. But on the flip side, they've got a goalie in Colin Creek, but he also has a defense that's willing to sell out. The North Carolina defense sticks in the passing lane, communicating, knocking down balls, soaking shots, contesting Sherry Lombides and crew. Look, man, jump in front of it. You want to advance, sell out. Both goalies have made five saves so far today. The fewest goals either of these teams or both of these teams have scored this year and a half is five. That's the fewest both have scored. And right now it's 3-2 with 634 left to go in this first half. But there's action, right? Yeah. Like you think of 3-2 and you think, ah, maybe a snoozer. No way. Even here, Duhenio has held his own against the two-headed monster of Tucci and Tyre. You just never know at the face-off box. That's going to be a call against Eugenio. I don't know about yeah, it. I don't Tyra know if he down. checked his stick and then Tyra went down. That didn't look call. like a push. Carolina, six on six. Anderson over to Herbert. He did just see a little bit of Tanner Cook on the man up. But for the most part, all day today, six on six, it's been Cole Herbert, the freshman. Now he'll shoot. There's the low, right? Yeah. Low does not work. Six saves for Kirst. The Rutgers look to attack quickly. Why not with Cheryl Abedes? Point just gets rid of it now. The D middies will sub out. Gallagher and Scott will come in. These guys look like carbon copies of each other, right? Five in red, 34 in red. Smaller, quicker. Right.
Gallagher from goal line extended. Comes upfield. Got Herbert out there on him, so keep an eye on that. Number six, offensive midfielder for North Carolina. Cursed. That ball gets deflected too. Number one, you know, that's a great Herbert. point because Herbert's had a lot of run in this game, right? And he just played offense. I, I stay on this matchup. And here he is behind the cage, d and up on Gallagher. Timeout. Timeout, Rutgers. And it's an interesting timeout by yeah. Coach Brecht at that moment, even though he had Herbert caught on the field. 3-2, Carolina on top. First half, NCAA men's lacrosse coverage continues next weekend for the semifinal and championship game. Action begins on Saturday, May 29th at noon on ESPN2. For more information on the 2021 men's lacrosse championship, visit NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Look at the brackets. Virginia earlier today, housing Georgetown. They advance. They'll take on the winner of this game. A couple of games tomorrow in South Bend. So you look right now. You have Ross Scott behind where he was at the time of the timeout, right? And he had an offensive midi and Cole Herbert on. Now he has Connor Marr, one of the better short stick D middies in the country. And he still got free and scores. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Breck knew what, exactly what he was doing by calling that timeout. What do we know, coach? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Pipe down in the booth. <laughs> Oh, man. I think we're going to hear about that one from Coach Breck. I hope so. But it's not even like they had a, a play drawn up. It's just, Scott, go to the rack. Boom. I watched him in an all-star game as a senior. He's from the state of Oregon. And I got to chat with him a little bit, too. Loves the game of lacrosse. But I felt like there was a, a level of offensive star power potentially for this kid. And with the attack as the Rutgers faithful goes nuts. With all those seniors and Kieran Mullins and Adam Sherry Lambides and Connor Kirst, he's playing out of position. But next year, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the keys to this offense. UFC faithful win number 15, Andrew mm -hmm. Tyre. Tyre wins it from Duhenio. Now Alex Bresci will await on Connor McCarthy. Here's Trippy. On Camish. He shoots. Misses, but backing it up. There's a shot. Curse is strong, too. Cameron could have beat him. Now a big battle for the ground ball behind the cage. They'll stay with North Carolina. Cameron wants to move quickly. Who can win their matchup? That's why I like when Zero's on the field, Lance Tillman. You know he could win his matchup. He's quick enough, right? So Tanner Cook is, is not playing regular settled offense. Do we see more of a dose of Justin Anderson going to the rack? Or Scherzinger, who has the ball now? Chris Gray is one of those superstars that off of ball movement is most effective dodging. Trippy got his hands free, couldn't get enough on that shot though. His curse is there once again, going down low for it. We talk so much about the low shots and how he just gobbles them up. Low shots won't work against a goalie like Colin Kirst unless you're moving the ball really quickly. You can get him off the pipes or you can get him off of his central location in the cage. You've got to get him moving. If you're not going to get him moving, those bouncers, I mean, he, it's, it's too easy for him. He's made nine saves here in the first half. Back to Ross Scott. And Sprock coming in out of the box. Mullins, he's got a def his defender hung up now. He can survey the field. Up top to Sprock, he'll look to dodge. Quickly to Scott. Ball's loose in front of the crease. Still loose. Three pounces on it. Turnover, though, gets yeah, it right back to Rutgers. Turnover. Alexander couldn't handle it. 23 and white. So an extended possession here for Rutgers offensively. Scott on Marr. Yeah. 
Carolyn Beatty's now from X. His defender's hung up. Scott, that's a great move. Back to his right. He'll shoot. Creed sees it. Now Carolina will look to strike quickly. Saved by Colin Creed. Alexander. Full head of steam. Cameron now behind the gray. Gray's going to try and do something here. Up top. Under two minutes to play in this first half. See this first midfield. Anderson, Perry. Herbert's been the third guy. First. No problem. And a nice job by his brother tracking that down. Here comes Nacessible. He shoots. He doesn't, but the ball is loose. You get a whistle in the crease. He's going to go back to Carolina. End-to-end -end action here. Timeout for North Carolina. Timeout by Joe Bresci in North Carolina. A minute and five left to go here in this first half. You look at the saves from Colin Kirst already, 10 in this first half. I mean, Krieg has eight, but Kirst has been remarkable. Outside of just his play for Rutgers, it's the story of Colin Kirst. Goes to Lehigh, only starts one game. He's behind James Spence, who's a fantastic goalie. Finally, he gets his shot as a fifth year at Rutgers and answers the bell. Big 10 goalie of the year, the igniter of the NASCAR offense and the last line of defense. Great save on Tanner Cook, man down there for Colin Kirst. You might have thought with a minute left to go in the first half, the score would be eight to eight. It's only three to three, but it's been an action wise. First game. Yeah, first half, it's been unbelievable. It has, and again, I credit Virginia defensively so much in that first game and Rutgers right now. I mean, to hold North Carolina, the number one seed heading into the NCAA tournament, but also the number one offense. 17 a game. It's crazy what they're doing defensively. Carolina is not owning any of the one-on-one -on -one matchups outside of the Tillman goal. I mean, this, this Rutgers defense has been rock solid. Carolyn Beatty's has been sensational. His two goals highlight real goals and gray has been quieter yeah and you know brian breck said something this week that i thought was telling he said we have to guard chris gray off ball first because if you don't guard chris gray well off the ball for me his dodging opens up because then he gets to a space One where he's really comfortable the dodging quarter, off the poor approaches so the priority has to be him off the ball first before you even think about covering him as an initiator or a dodger. Shot clock is inco inconsequential if North Carolina wants it to be. They can hold the final shot, final second. And it looks like that's going to be Coach Bresci's M.O. here. When do you go here, Clark, though? you got to go... With about at least 20, right? Just in case yeah. you get a second opportunity. I, I like I like between 15 and 20 always. Get that second look if you have the back. They might up. not even get one opportunity. Nope. They won't. Great play by Kamish to force the turnover. Now what can Rutgers do quickly? French Kowiak. Can he get a shot off? Can he get a timeout. 6.3, they may put a couple of seconds back on the clock. Okay, so whatever you think that he's going to do on this timeout, he's not, right? He just proved us wrong <laughs> the last time. That's a really good timeout. But look, was that last timeout when they took their offense off the field against Carolina's offensive middies where you think you would have a chance? I would take those matchups nine times out of ten. He got that one, but I think, yeah, in this spot, 
Yeah. I, I think that's a wonderful timeout. You have Frank Koyak is, is in, a, in a tough, distressed moment there. Six seconds. I mean, you can have a nice carry with Mullins and work some pick game on either side, right? You can, you can run a pick play where Kirst is popping with the right, Sherry Lombidi's with the left. I mean, you do have options. I would start the ball here with Kieran Mullins because of his passing ability. And, and then you put him around those shooters. Right. Halftime's coming up. Clark and I will look back at the first game that Virginia handled Georgetown, show you highlights and a recap of that game. Plus a preview of the two games tomorrow up in South Bend. Q and Anish standing by to bring you Notre Dame and Maryland and Loyola and Duke. Okay, so you have Scott with the ball, five and red. As I mentioned earlier, he's going to be a quarterback for this team, and he's got a shorty on him, too, so I, I like this play as well. Now we get whistles and more whistles. This is the, the counter game, by right? Right? Yes, yeah. and the counter. A little chess match. So what will you expect? Probably a poll on Scott this time, right? You got four polls. You know he's the type of player that can get separation. All right, our Stack Sports lineup continues today and tomorrow. NBA playoffs underway on ESPN this afternoon. Then game one between the Celtics and Nets will be on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern, also at 8 o'clock on ESPN. Junior welterweight unification bout between Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor. Then tomorrow morning on ESPN2, the Monaco Grand Prix jump starts today in the final round of the PGA Championship on ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern. So a full weekend of sports. Nicholson is still in the lead, huh? That's interesting. The PGA Championship. Yeah. Lefty. Yeah. A 50-year-old still got it. Sometimes. Look, man, I'm sitting next to a 50-year-old who's built like the Incredible Hulk. So, <laughs> so don't tell me 50's old. Appreciate that, really. I'm feeling old, though. Having fun today, though. First game wasn't wasn't uh, what we thought it would be, but this game has lived up to everything we imagined it could be, and maybe even more. All tied at three apiece. Final 6.3 in this first half, so a chance for Rutgers to get a lot of juice going into the locker room. So Scott still going after the pole. That just tells you what type of confidence right. Brian Brecht has in this kid. Has Matt right on him. Scott gets to the goal and got a decent shot off. Just couldn't quite put it where he wanted to. Season low for both teams in terms of goals in the first half. But we are tied at three apiece. North Carolina, the number one seed in this tournament. Getting all they can handle from Rutgers out of the Big Ten. Adam Sherlambides with a couple of spectacular goals. Colin Kirst, sharp and net. The new dad, Justin Anderson, bearing one for himself. 3-3 three, three is a great game. Again, coming up in about an hour's time. Earlier today, the first team did just so. Virginia and Georgetown. We thought we would see a good one here. We, we really saw Virginia team that dominated from the start. From a physicality perspective, Right out of the gate, they made their presence felt. James Riley went down. It was a huge blow at the faceoff dot for Georgetown. But make no mistake about it, Doc Sakin, Jared Connor, Petey LaSalle in the middle of the field. Those were the guys that gave this offense multiple opportunities. And when they settled, no one was better on the field than Connor Schellenberger. Six goals and one assist. He was unguardable. The record postseason-wise for Cavalier was six. Doug Knight, 1995, against Brown. And the legacy of Connor Schellenberger has just started, Cotter. The reigning national champs advance to their 24th championship weekend with a resounding 14-3 win over Georgetown. Jake Haraway shut out on this day, and it's a great season for Georgetown but it comes to an end. Tomorrow, the first of two in South Bend, it's Loyola taking on Notre, or, uh, taking on Duke. Don't sleep on the Hounds. They have a duo of Aiden Olmstead and Kevin Lindley, both lefties. Both have postseason experience. 
and they're coached by Charlie Toomey, Mark Van Arsdale, and Matt Dwan. They will have a plan and a scheme, but they have their hands full dealing with Michael Sowers, who had eight points in the first half in his first playoff game in his career against High Point. He seems to be playing with a new confidence. Nakai Montgomery putting together a first-team All-American season. And the ACC Rookie of the Year, well, he plays like a full-grown man with a skill set that's unmatched. Bowers and Olmstead, two stars to watch for in this game. Let's not forget about Loyola, not old. Rutgers in North Carolina, Chris Cotter and Paul Carcaterra on a day where we've seen a lot of things that we didn't expect. I don't think we expected to see such a low-scoring game, although we did get about as much action as we could have bargained for in that first half. But Chris Gray, also, I don't think we would have expected to see him scoreless in the first half. Well, look, Carolina comes in scoring more than 17 goals a game, leads the nation. Chris Gray leads the nation in overall points. He's been quiet. But for me, it's really not about Chris Gray. I'm looking for the complementary parts of the Carolina offense to be initiators because Chris Gray typically works best off of ball movement when he initiates. When he pulls it out and he's going to the rack, that's not really his strength. When the Carolina offense moves the ball at hyperspeed, he does a lot better dodging off of poor approaches. So I'm looking for guys like Lance Tillman and Justin Anderson to start the offense and then get the ball to Gray, and that's when he's masterful. Meanwhile, Adam Sherilyn Beatty's with a couple of highlight reel goals in that first half, Bart. You look at the wrist action. It's such a quick snap. Bam, right there. He goes from turn to rake for a goalie. It's just tremendous, the low-rising ability when he shoots. It's always the type of goal that the crowd will go nuts, and you and I in the booth will say, wow. Sherilyn Beatty's has been a huge part of this Rutgers offense today. Good crowd at Short Stadium here in Hempstead. Other than Sherilyn Beatty's, Rutgers has been one for 15 in the first half. Sherilyn Beatty's himself, two for four. He gets set to start the second, all tied at three apiece. Winner advances to play Virginia in the semifinals next Saturday. Kennyo wins the battle for the ground ball. How about that, huh? Yeah. Talk about hustling all the way down the field and not giving up on the play. And that's the type of player that Brian Dreck talked about with Kennyo. He could lose 80% of his faceoffs as he did against Michael Sisselberger last week against Lehigh. But when you need a play, he made two huge plays in the second half. Like Petey LaSalle from Virginia, he's a midfielder, right? He faces off, but he's comfortable playing offense. He's comfortable playing defense. And and making those in between the restraint box plays. Scott. Double team comes on him. Mullins spins. Now back to Scott. Shot and a goal. Rutgers takes the lead. I'm telling you, Ross Scott is on to something. Five in red, playing with his head up off of a quick pass from Kieran Mullen. So you have the two guys who see the field from behind the cage better than anyone on this Rutgers offense. They are initiating the play. Starts with Mullins at X. Comes off that pick, Scott. Heads up. And then David Sprott, Dallas, Texas. Set your feet, plant, and rip. Rutgers' first lead since it was one to nothing in this game. It'll be Duhenio and Tyre. Tyre comes away with it. Andrew Tyre. Reshi shoots. First tested early. It's up to it. Here comes Rutgers. Bullet. Has the ball knocked away, but still loose. First wins the battle for the loose ball. And Michael 
for Sanguinetti with the ball in his cross. Dean Scott is back on the field again as a midfielder. Not a concern as long as he doesn't cross the midline. If he gets caught on defense, then his offensive reps will be compromised. If you keep him as an offensive midi and out of the box, he can play every shift. Here he is. Up to Sanguinetti. Twelve to shoot for Rutgers. First has room. Locked up in front. Big hit though. He and Bresci collided and Curse gets the ball back. Will he throw it away though? It's going to be over and back. Well, they say it was tipped, I suppose. Seeing Curse now from that lefty wing shooting righty trying to go low both. I, I've seen him shoot the ball high to high. Upper 90s type gas. If I'm cursed, coming off of, of the inside and popping outside, let it fly high. Knobloch gets free and scores! The freshman whips this crowd into a frenzy. <laughs> Knobloch started the season scoring seven straight Big Ten games. Cursed with the poor shot, but guess what? He rides it back. Feels like he owes the team a ground ball. He's had multiple big-time plays that go unnoticed, giving his team extra possessions. And then Knobloch, Big Ten Freshman of the Year, hasn't been on a scoring spree at all as of late. But the talent level and the skill that we saw in the first half of the season no surprise he can make a play like that. Rutgers largest lead of the game is two. And we get a loose ball hold on the faceoff against North Carolina. Four unanswered for Rutgers to forge this two goal advantage. Down the wide and great hustle by Bowen to win possession for his team. We're seeing Rutgers winning matchups, right, with Scott. The question is now, as Carolina clears, who's winning the matchup for Carolina? During the regular season, Tanner Cook could do it. There's other guys that could do it. Justin Anderson's done it before. But in this game, we're not seeing Carolina win the one-on-one -on -one matchups, and that's going to be the key in the second half. Anderson now delivers a hit himself. What an individual effort, and he scores! When you're a fifth-year senior and you come back to make a run at a national title, there's no quit in your game. Attack by one, two, three, four Rutgers defenders. It doesn't matter. The sheer determination, Justin Anderson. That's Carolina's first goal in almost 15 minutes of game time. They finally solve Colin Kirst. And it's the 25-year-old senior from Las Vegas who took on the entire Rutgers defense and won. Three-time captain from a non-traditional area in Las Vegas, Nevada. And burst on the scene was actually a monster recruit. And then delayed the start of his career for the Mormon mission in Chile. And he's the ultimate teammate. Couldn't ask for better character out of your leader and your three-time captain. Rutgers has won seven of the 12 faceoffs in this game. Gallagher gets rid of it though. 
Tough angle shot for Kieran Mullen. Look at a cross check here against North Carolina. They had Gallagher where they wanted him, but they didn't finish him cleanly. 23, Parker Alexander gets him up high. Could have been a cross check, could have been a hold. The cross check sends you to the box for a minute. The hold would have been 30 seconds. Rutgers man up this year, very successful. Almost 52% with the third best in the country. First, Sherilyn Beattie. He scores. That's Knobloch. Two in a row for Knobloch. Looks like it was Sprock, Connor, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, There's two in this Sprock. third quarter from Sprock. You know, credit Eric Saramet, who's the offensive coordinator and a North Carolina grad. He was the Air Force head coach. He's masterful in terms of setting the team up to their strength. Sprock, a righty shooter, and when you put him on the same side as Connor Kirst, it's problems for the Carolina defense, because you have to pick, like, who are we going to press out against? If you don't press out against Sprock, obviously he'll burn you. If you don't press out against Connor Kirst, I mean, turn on the tape from the last four years of college lacrosse. On the wing on that faceoff. I mean, we came into this game, didn't think that Rutgers could, could win more than 50%. But they didn't need to win 50% to win games. They've been doing it all season long in the 30s. To win 50% would be... Brian Breck would take that in a heartbeat. Now there's Knobloch. Can't just ride the ball from Nabla. Here's Sprock up top. He'll shoot again. Mixing it up, too. On a lefty goalie, that placement is spot on. It's a, it's a little wide, but that's the direction you want to be at. Wanting to shoot for Rutgers. Here comes Scott. Come on. Most of the game on that Karen shot. Knobloch backs it up. Seven seconds to shoot for Rutgers. Gonna have to move quickly. Now the officials want to talk things over again. This is like 500 pounds of combined weight right here. And you can see Rutgers already making changes to try and get their and defensive the players on the field. Here's Herbert. One of the top freshmen in the country. One of the top recruits in the country, I should say. But he loses it. Back down, down by Chris Gray. Chris Gray. Now Anderson. Tough angle. Kelly couldn't find the target. You saw Ethan Rawl, 29 in red, chase down Herbert. Ethan Rawl is one of the most underrated long stick midfielders in the country. He does not get the recognition, 29 in red, that he deserves. Gray looking for his first point on the day, throws it away. Go. 
Six turnovers for Carolina on the day. Bobby Russo and company looking to clear it. Here's Curse. Oh, and they're going to be kicking themselves yes. there. Kieran Mullins yes. had a direct line. He was going to meet Colin Creed at the crease. I think he was thinking about that before he caught it. Instead, Carolina gets it back. been near flawless when Carolina has shot from the outside. They get through the progression of their offense. Interchangeable parks, this time Solomon. Good off-ball movement by Trippy. Nothing the righty goalie Curse can do here. Head up, find your teammate. Carolina's knocking on the door. third quarter and a low scoring game but we've had a ton of action today great goal tending great defensive play the last couple of games Rutgers has been so good on the defensive end that's been a big story for them as to why they're in the position they're in right now a quarter and a half away from possibly getting the championship weekend and we've had players from North Carolina like Trippy, Tillman and McCarthy scoring goals today yeah and, and to be quite honest with you like right now the attack is is Kelly Solomon and Gray and, I, and I'm good with that but if Lance Tillman, zero in white, isn't on the attack line, I, I just feel like his quickness could be an equalizer for his team and his offense moving forward. I would sub him through the box and have him play some midfield because step for step, I'm not sure a Rutgers defender can match his quickness. And he's only really been playing attack. And Cole Herbert, who has crazy upsides running with that first midfield, I, I would throw Lance Tillman in with Justin Anderson and Will Perry. Give it a shot. Right now, Cole Herbert awaiting his opportunity to get on the field. Perry, he'll get his hands. Joe, I thought he was going to fire it. Didn't you on that one? Trent Stoyak just pushed him aside enough. Here's Gray. Look to Kelly on the far side. You just can't connect. That's one where they typically cash in on, right? A slide when you're not beat, right? When teams slide too quickly to Gray, he finds his teammates within a second. This time it just wasn't on the stick. Carolina just all kinds of trouble for Rutgers now on the ride, and they get possession back. Connor Mark. Gray up top. Look at that feed and a goal. That's a gorgeous feed from Gray to Nikki Solomon. You gotta clear cleanly. And Kamish has the ball on the defensive side of the field. And he's checked, right? If you're a teammate of, of Kamish, you gotta be screaming, watch your back, watch your back. If you're Kamish, you got to feel that pressure and race towards the offensive end. And if you don't, this is what will happen. Everyone talks about Virginia's ride. Well, North Carolina's ride is not far off of Virginia's ride. It's been well documented. They go after teams when they clear the ball. And then Chris Gray heads up. He's in transition. Too easy. Face off initially won by Carolina, but a big ground ball. Going gets it for Rutgers. Remember when it was 6-4 and 
Connor Kirst had that ball coming over the midline, and he passes to Kieran Mullins. It's a drop ball. Could have been 7-4, right? Carolina comes back. All tied up at 6. Ken Rutgers counterpunch. Approaching the four-minute mark of this third quarter. Carolina led it to half. Rutgers is stormed back to retake the lead. At one point, a two-goal lead here in the third. Now we're all even. Brock. Now to Sherilyn Beatty with a short stick midfielder on him. That's Alexander. Mullins in front to Sprock. Just couldn't get anything on it. Now a loose ball. Interference yes. on Mullins. Bresci. Parker Alexander. Kelly and now Gray behind the cage. Carthew has a goal in this one early on in the first half. As does Alex Trippi, just scored moments ago. Here comes, now here comes Lance Tillman. So you've got Trippi, Tillman, and McCarthy in this midfield unit. McCarthy gets to the cage. Tough angle, though. Chopper number 32. Crease violation. Yeah, violation on uh, McCarthy. Turn up. We've seen it from North Carolina. Now we see it from Rutgers. The second unit in again. Haven't seen Scherzinger in a little while. Number two for North Carolina. He's been replaced by Lance Tillman on the second unit. Took plenty of time to shoot, 35 seconds. That's a tough angle shot and a goal by Tillman. What did you say? Zero. That's your guy. Keep him on the field. A lot like Rutgers is using Ross Scott, Carolina can use Lance Tillman. You look at the numbers, they're not eye-popping, but when you watch his skill set, he's ready to pop. His teammates know it. Carolina's on a run. Tar Heels finding some inside seams of the Rutgers defense, capitalizing on blown clears for Rutgers. Got to play clean in the specialty game. Too many... Big-time offensive threats for Carolina, and Lance Tillman's one of them. Outside of Justin Anderson's two goals, you know, you've got guys like Tillman with a couple, Trippy, McCarthy with goals in this game. Dehenio wins another faceoff. He's plus 50% in this game. But what's happening, when Rutgers doesn't clear the ball well, and we've seen two blown clears result in two goals. The defense has been playing really, really well. It's only a matter of time when you play that many possessions, you're going to get gassed, right? They're, they're not giving their defense adequate rest because of their blown clears. Mullins now has Macri hung up. Had a notion to get Sherilyn Beatty's. Now he does. One, 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 
Acre does a nice job harassing him. <laughs> that almost went. <laughs> 22 to shoot for Rutgers. Here's Scott. Now block will chase it down to Curse. Seven to shoot. Bowen on Curse. Curse gets inside and scores! There's Mom Michelle. She's loving it. 6 3, 230. Big time righty. Also a big time competitor. Going through the heart of the Carolina defense with this backhand beauty. This crowd is unbelievable. I think they broke our crowd, Mike. Michelle loving it. And why not? 7-7, seven, seven, late in the going here in the third quarter. Yeah, you think these fans are dying for some lacrosse? And they are getting a treat this afternoon. I mentioned earlier, could Rutgers deliver the counterpunch? Well, their biggest, baddest dude on the team just had a backhand goal for the ages. You're seeing so much of those backhands, right? Instead of switching over to your left hand, and spending that time when when you're practicing these backhands see it in the men's and the women's game it's such an added asset to shot ready play try to get it to gather mullins right at the buzzer krieg makes the stop take a breath we've got one more quarter still to go carolina rutgers one of them is on their way to East Hartford. Who knows who it'll be? You gotta stay tuned to find out. Four, Rutgers, one of the last teams to get into this tournament as an at-large bid out of the Big Ten, showing they belonged last week and proving that they could be a championship weekend caliber team here this week. Yeah, when you combine for 73 years on this earth between their attacks, you're gonna get players ready to take over ready to give you their best shot. Sherry Lombides and Kirst, the most experienced attack in America, has kept Rutgers in this game and providing what would be the biggest moment in modern lacrosse for the team from Piscataway. Until last weekend, they had won an NCAA tournament game since 1990. Higher wins the draw. Cameron, he'll shoot. Kirst is there to make the save. Now, number 19, Brian Cameron. Keeping the momentum with Rutgers. When you watch Kirst, though, there's no cheating in his game, right? He, he doesn't he doesn't flinch. He plays his pipes and his mechanics are so flawless, and then he reacts. There, there's no guessing in his game. His brother Connor picks up the loose ball in the middle of the field. Colin Kirst had 12 saves in this game. Hasn't had to work nearly as hard in that third quarter as he did in the first half. Neither goalie has let up a soft goal. I mean, there, there has not been a goal where you're like, ah, should have had that one. It's been a shooting clink for goals that have gone in. Sprock now. Gallagher now behind the cage to Cheryl Embiid. Now Morris hung up. He'll look to get in front. He does, and he's going to score on that one every single time. He's loving it, and he's playing to the crowd. They are on their feet. The calmness and the ability to know you have more time. This is a hard trait for an attackman to have, right? If he took that shot a step or two before, Connor or Krieg makes that stop, right? But it's the extra fake. 
Colin Krieg has no chance once he takes that extra step. The extra step allows him to have a free net because he has a biting on those those prior two steps also came with some stick fakes. Violation against Rutgers, North Carolina ball. Perry looking to dodge. Herbert. Quick passing Anderson. Ground ball back down by Perry, and then he loses it out of bounds. It's a tough one. Another turnover in the middle of the field, though. And if we get a flag down, this is going to go against Rutgers. Anderson, he's not going to wait for the call because he's going to put the ball in the back of the net. Rutgers coming into this game. Seventh in the nation. 89% clear in the ball. In this half alone, we've seen four blown clears. Carolina has been relentless with pressure. And it's been paying off in the middle of the field. Blown clears to goals for Carolina has been the story for their offense. They haven't been able to really solve Rutgers in their defense six on six. They're finding other ways to manufacture offense. And it starts with the blown clears of Rutgers. Anderson got the cause turnover. He got the goal. And it's a cross check against Franz Kowiak. So he goes to the box regardless of the goal. So now it's a man up situation for North Carolina for a minute. Big face off right here. And it, now it's turned into a big ground ball. Tyer giving chase. It'll go to Rutgers, and that's a big possession for them. Momentum all on Carolina's side, trying to kill off this man down. I like this midfield to, to crush this penalty with Sprock and Gallagher ball handlers and Gallagher's played a lot of attack for Rutgers in the past as well so he's got a shorty on him he can dissolve this extra man opportunity for Carolina just run for days 10 seconds on the man up for North Carolina you know you've made a great point about Dehenio though right like it's the timing of the faceoff win Right there, it's tied up. Easy. Carolina has a minute extra man. And Dehenio, once again, we even saw that last week against Michael Sisselberger, right? The way that he wins critical faceoffs. Even strength. Rutgers does the job of killing off the man down. Now Scott gets a little bit of room and he scores! The defense let him be, and he made him pay. I didn't think he had the angle. From up in the press box, it does not look like he has the angle. But you're seeing the next Rutgers star emerge before our very eyes. Ross Scott knows that he has to take another step upfield to increase his angle. He does that. And it hits off Colin Krieg's leg. And it goes in. Ross Scott, to me, has been the difference for Rutgers today. In terms of initiating offense and taking pressure off the big three at attack, he's been that extra added bonus and that, that juice and the one who's igniting the offense. Two goals on the day for Scott. The sophomore from West Lynn, Oregon. Pushing the back. Again, possession to Rutgers off the faceoff. Knobloch. Can he get to the cage? He does. 
Will we get a push or in the crease? In the crease is the call. It's going to go against Rutgers, North Carolina ball. The timing of that dodge, right? You, you almost felt like Rutgers had to, had to get a possession. Now back comes Carolina. Back and forth we go. The number of responses in this game, Clark, have oh. been unreal. Herbert getting a lot more playing time today with the injury to Tanner Cook. Cook. That's Chris Gray. He got open a little bit and tried to get it to Cameron, but it was a little bit of a force. Bobby Russo now on his horse. UNC grab ball number three, Russo William Perry. Coming up, shaking up a little bit. Cameron is wide open for that shot and just couldn't quite put it on target. Russo in this defense are gassed right now. And that's a timeout by Brian Breck that, that I think is well-timed because they are gassed. Bobby Russo's been on Chris Gray and, and running around defensively. He's trying to clear, and he's sprinting 100 yards there and back. Listen, let's go. Bring it in. Some physical play, too, Clark. Russo took a check on that clear. Putting in the miles. Look at it. Hammering away on that left wrist. Tara, 9-8, our score, Rutgers in the lead. We've had five ties, four lead changes in this game. Brian Brecht, Joe Bresci earning their pay today <laughs> as these two coaches try and figure out what they need to do in the last 10 minutes and 31 seconds secure a place in championship weekend. You just feel like this is the kind of game, like once one team goes on a run and you feel like they have momentum, the other team just counters with a right hook. It's unbelievable the resolve of both of these teams. Now is it Carolina's turn. And Jacob Kelly. Trippy. Double comes on him to McCarthy. Now behind the cage. Great. He loses it. Ethan Rawl comes out of there with it, but a great job of checking back on it was Lance Tillman. And we're going to get a push, though, or a hold, and this one's going to go against North Carolina. Yeah, Rawl had the ball, and he got pushed. And Rutgers can't believe that the officials stopped the quick yeah, restart. Yeah, they wanted that quick restart. You and I, during the break, were talking about these Rutgers poles, Russo and Rawl, and all these guys who can get out in the middle of the field. And run like the wind. Yes. Ross Scott. A couple of goals today. He has been the catalyst for this Rutgers offense. And he knows he has a shorty, right? There's no, four long sticks right. out there. He doesn't care that it's Connor Moore. He has a shorty. He's going. Not Cheryl Levine. Mullins now up top. Over to Curse. Trying to power his way to the goal. Rutgers bench one of the call. Won't get it. 25 to shoot. First, nice catch on the end line. First working on Alexander. Got his right and scores! He beats him off the roll. But this one-on-one -on -one matchup is won. When Alexander decides to one-hand rap check a 230 pounder and he just swats him right here look at the one-handed rap you can't do that against connor kirk right then he wins the leverage game and now he's got it he's got options right brings him up above goal line extended 
Rutgers Nation and the Kurtz family jumping for joy. Two and one for Kurtz, the transfer from Villanova. Transferred in first. And his brother Colin followed suit from Lehigh. We talked about it one night at the dinner table. It was just a thought. The next day it was a reality. Drafted by the Whip Stakes. We'll see him in the PLL next year. We'll redo the face-off. Much to the chagrin of the folks here in attendance. <laughs> Oh man, we're seeing a lot of everything today. Rutgers wins possession. They've been so good today on the faceoff. Max haven't they? They've won 13 of 22. This is going to be an opportunity for North Carolina, and it's going to be a goal. Three for zero today. And off of a blown opportunity from Rutgers to get the ball in their offensive set. And Chris Gray, he might be quiet, but he delivers this goal because of his unselfish offensive awareness. Give, go, right back to him. A lot of times when an attackman catches the ball where Gray was, they're thinking shot, right, Chris? The defense shifts to him in one motion, hits Tillman on the left side with a better shooting opportunity. But middle of the field play, as much as Dehenio has been a force at the X, Carolina is winning the middle of the field. Four goals off of failed clears today, Clark, for North Carolina. It's the exact opposite of last week for Rutgers, right? Rutgers last week to Henio wasn't winning faceoffs, but they were perfect in the clearing game. They were almost perfect in the middle of the field. And this week it's the opposite. They're winning faceoffs, but they're losing that game in the middle of the field. It's, it's unbelievable. And that's why I think it's so important for people not to have, like, over assumptions regarding the face offense, right? Because there's, there's so many other aspects of the game that, that are critical, right? It's, it's one-fourth of, like, the specialty game with the man up and the man down is one and, and the clearing and the riding and the face-off play, right? And then you throw in goals, which is which, which are complete outliers in big games. You, you can't put too much stock into just saying, okay, they have the better face-off guy. You know, they're going to get more possessions. No, there's other ways to manufacture possessions, and Carolina's doing it riding. Sterling Beatties. Trying to make space for himself. Now Knobloch on the shorty. First. Trying to back his way in and get space. Up to Sprock and now Knobloch. 15 to shoot. Knobloch will do just that. Shoots it wide and Carolina wins the battle. And Alexander to the end line to get possession. That's a mistake by Rutgers. Seven minutes to go. One goal game, Rutgers trying to bring the upset. Go to their first ever championship weekend. and shoot, decides to come back out with it. Still 32 to shoot, plenty of time. What a move, and a goal! What a game Lance Tillman is having! You just feel it. You feel it with Ross Scott from Rutgers, you feel it with Lance Tillman. Far from eye-popping numbers on the season, but it's the way he can take advantage of this Rutgers defense, and it's with that. His footwork, it's a hard jab with his left plant foot to sell the top side of the field and then to dip under. 
He has been magnificent. Clark, he had five goals on the year coming in. He has four today. You just felt it, right? Like early in this game, I just I just knew that he was the type of guy. And look at that, that on, the, on the ride. Causing that turnover. Now North Carolina wants a call for a blow to the head, and they're gonna get it. Tillman gets possession for Carolina. We're going to get a slashing call, most likely, against Rutgers. And Will Bowen is just screaming at his bench. Get the intensity up. I don't know how much more they could get it up at this point. Perry, he'll shoot. Hurst is there, though. And now we'll get the official's call. That's Perry's spot. Three and white. You give him time. The officials right now are talking about it. We'll get the call momentarily. That's Garrett Bullock. Look who causes this turnover. Lance Tillman, Johnny on the spot, right? Like Chris Gray, leading scorer in the nation. Quiet, where are you finding your offense? At half, I, I felt like they had to have offense manufactured from someone other than Chris Gray. Well, Lance Tillman's been that guy. Now man up for a minute. Gray finds a play, an unbelievable save! Kirk, for the second time in this game, just robs Tanner Cook on the far post. And that's a tough ask for Connor. For Colin Kirst to stand tall against a guy like Tanner Cook, right? Right on the doorstep. But Tanner Cook has only played these extra man opportunities. So he's not in the flow of the game. Still 25 seconds on the North Carolina man up, but Rutgers has possession. And David Sprock is more than happy to just watch that clock tick down. 14 saves now for Colin Kirst. Teams are even. Full strength as we see this save. Yeah, left side of your screen, Colin Kirst standing his ground. Tanner Cook is normally automatic in that spot. 15 to shoot for Rutgers. They killed off the penalty. What can they do offensively? Gallagher. Carolyn Beatty. He shoots and scores! My partner, Paul Karkatera, has head and hands. He can't even believe it. I can't believe it. I can't even say his name right. I can't even believe it so much. This is crazy. Cheryl Beatty's all left, right? But the shovel shot that you saw from Connor Kirst in the third quarter. You don't have time, right? to change hands. You don't feel as comfortable driving up with the right hand to close the deal. So you go back to your strength with your left hand. With no angle, the margin for error is basically zilch. And he finds the back of the net. Now Bresci going back to Tucci. He'll shoot and score! Who else? Who else is going to step up and score a big goal today? And Tucci runs right back to the faceoff bench and says, bring it on. I want another one. Make it, take it. Zach Tucci, the only thing on the ground that has beaten Colin Kerr today are high bounces. That's it. We saw McCarthy in the first quarter use the turf. He is so good low, but when you bounce the ball high, he gets to his natural attack spot in terms of gobbling it up low, and the ball goes top shelf for Tucci. Five seconds in between goals. We're nodded once again inside of four to go. 
Tucci wins another one. This time he sells him getting it to Chris Gray. But how about Tucci, right? Wins that face-off, scores, and sprints back to the dot, right? That's my kind of guy. That's the kind of guy you want in a huge moment. And these moments are all huge. Three and a half left to go, all tied at 11. What's at stake? A trip to championship weekend. Anderson has his pass deflected and broken up by Kamish. Now a ground ball. Chris Gray is there to pick it up. Once again, the officials need to discuss things. This is almost certainly going to be a shot clock issue. Yep. It's at 43 it's right at 43 now. 43 right now, and they needed to reset it. Yes, because it looked like Kamish had the ball. Yep. And then North Carolina on the ride was able to get it back for a fresh clock. And that's what they're discussing right now to make sure that the clocks are all synced. But it shouldn't be at 80, though, because Gray had the ball for a few seconds. Yeah, probably should be more around 75. We got too much momentum going yeah. in this game. They can't, <laughs> yeah. they can't right. slow this down to adjust the clock. <laughs> yeah, right. We got too much going on. Anderson spins back to his right through traffic. He goes down. Now we'll get a call. I can't believe we got a call on that. John Ethan Rawl, let's see the replay here. They call hold. On the back of his leg, yeah. you see the stick on the back of his Looks leg? Looks like the stick was between his legs, right. too. Real time, I don't know if I agree with right. it. On the replay, that looks like it was the right call. So, Carolina 0 for 3 on the day, extra man. They'll get 30 seconds opportunity here. Great save by Kirst. Yeah, Hurst was going for the ball, but he was smart enough to, to keep the one foot in the crease. Yep. Looked like interference. And he got interfered with, so Rutgers ball. And a great opportunity here to kill this man down. Coin. Sprinting by Will Bowen. This has been amazing. Thank you, Lacrosse. We all needed this after a year off. <laughs> this is the moment we all wanted to oh, be in, man. right? This is what we wanted. With the crowd, too, talking about head and hands. Look at the crowd here at Short Stadium. Everybody on their feet. They can't believe the treat that they have been given here today. Under two to play, Gallagher. Cheryl Beatties can't do it again. Can't do it again. This time he misses and creeps the hustle play to the end line and get possession. That's the second time now in the fourth quarter Rutgers hasn't had backup. You can't blame Cheryl Lombides, right? He's had the hot hand. He's got the green light to go. But you have to, you have to send someone behind. Mar up to Alexander. Carolina successful on the clear and Joe Bresci wants to talk things over. One minute, 37 seconds left to go Carolina, in this game. North Carolina. Let's look at the brackets. This is what we'll find out in the next minute, 37, maybe, as we're all tied at 11. Virginia sailed by their quarterfinal matchup against Georgetown earlier today. So the Wahoos are watching this one, and I'm sure they can't believe their eyes like the rest of us. North Carolina and Rutgers, the winner of this one goes to play Virginia. Tomorrow, Q and Anish, they're up in South Bend. They've got Maryland and Notre Dame. Are you kidding me with that one? The first game is going to be Duke and Loyola. If you're just joining us, some of the action you've missed today has been unbelievable. I mean, Adam Sarah Lombides. 
planting, falling, ripping, top shelf. Connor Kirst, backhand extraordinaire, top corner. Tucci, right off the face. The only bouncers that I've seen work against Colin Kirst are the high ones. And all of this, when you think about this, look at that bottom one right there. Chris Gray just has not, he's got two assists on the day, but in general, it's been so many other players, like a guy, like a Tillman, for example, who has four goals in this game. Four goals in this game, five coming into this game for the entire season, right? <laughs> right. I, I think UNC, you start with a guy like Tillman, right? Well, Tillman has the pole now, so Anderson has a pole. Will Perry has a short stick. I, I think you have to put Chris Gray, four and white, in a spot where he is handling the ball off the initial dodge because he is masterful. Once the defense breaks down, he knows how to make those decisions, how to decipher where the ball needs to go next. So I'm setting up my dodge in the next Carolina player to get the ball off the initial dodge is four and white. And as quiet a, a day as Gray has had, he still does have three assists. I cheated him on one. About a 27-second differential on shot clock and game clock. Here comes Gray. Hamish runs right into him, but he's got the short stick midi now matchup. See, this is a problem because Rutgers is going to have to slide early. He needs a shot, and Kirst is there! What a great save by Kirst! You can't shoot low on Colin Kirst. And Kamish comes out of there with it, but then he loses it. The call is going to go to Carolina. What a job on the ride by Anderson. And Justin Anderson is hurt. Justin Anderson hurt his knee on that play. And it might be a game saver and a season saver for North Carolina. Ryan Brecht is going to call a timeout during this situation to talk things over with his team as we're going to get the North Carolina staff to go over and take a look at Justin Anderson. You hope it's a cr uh, cramp there, Cotter. I mean, he's been such a workhorse for the Tar Heels. They're rubbing that right calf. Tough as nails and what he does in the middle of the field, and we know him as an offensive dodger and a scorer, but he can play both ends. And Colin Kirst, once again, the low bounce shots have not worked for Carolina. He's been masterful. You see Anderson not giving up, selling out, and just throwing his body, and, and that leap right there could define this championship run for the Heels. The number one seed heading into the NCAA tournament Gets a hustle play from their three-time captain and leader, Justin Anderson, who's back on his feet and running. And he gets an ovation from both those clad in Carolina blue and scarlet today. Even the Rutgers fans appreciate the effort that Justin Anderson put in. It's those hustle kind of plays. The quarterfinals. Back in the late 2000s, I think it was 2007, when Max Siebold for Cornell chased down an Albany player down in Annapolis, saving a play. Seabold, the Tuarton winner and the, and the leader of the Big Red, making a play on the other side of the field to give his offense another opportunity to get to championship weekend. That is the type of play you saw just there. 38 seconds on the clock. Tied at 11. Carolina's got to successfully clear it first and then set up. Bowen. And ahead to Connor Marr. And now the timeout, as you would suspect, by Coach Bresci. 19.8 left to go. <laughs> what are you thinking here, Cart? This is nuts. I mean, your leader throughout the season. And last season in 2020, when the season was cut short, 
been Chris Gray, and I've talked a lot about him being the second guy in the in the progression of the offense, right? To have an initial Dodger, then him dissecting the defense. With 19 seconds left, though, I want him to have the ball. This is a moment, I don't care that Chris Gray hasn't scored in this game, and he's got the assist, but at the end of the day, he is, as Joe Bresci has said, a generational talent. So with 19 seconds left in a quarterfinal matchup to head back to championship weekend, first time since 2016, you have to put the ball in Chris Gray's stick. If there was like 30 to 45 seconds left, I might let it fester a little marinate bit more. Marinate yes, yes, marinate, exactly. With 19 seconds, I'm not getting cute. Right. It's like Jimmy Chit with a Hoosier. <laughs> I, you, know, you don't use him as a decoy. I'll make it, coach. Get the ball to Jimmy Chitwood. You get the ball to Chris Gray. And Gray will start with the ball on his cross. Checked by Bobby Russo. When he transferred from Boston University, he came to Carolina for this moment. Gray back to his left. To the middle of the field. Russo all over him. Tillman. Six seconds. Tillman's gonna have to go on the go to the cage. Trying to find Chris Gray dodging. Can't. And he can't get a shot off. That Rutgers defense steps up. We're going to overtime. At the end of regulation, they never even got a shot off. In the open, I mentioned. Could Rutgers defense hold up? Well, the answer is yes. They've been incredible because Carolina is known for a team to move the ball at hyperspeed. And Rutgers defensively, in terms of their assignments, and the five other defenders not on the ball have been in sync. Take a deep breath, everybody. We've got overtime lacrosse, the winner, the championship weekend when we come back. Rutgers 11. We head to overtime. Here are the rules in overtime. Sudden victory. That's the most important rule of all of them. First ball to go into the net. We're going to see a massive celebration regardless of who scores. Four minute periods until one of these two teams scores. We get a two minute intermission in between each period, and you do get a timeout each period, which is important. Yeah, I'm good with all these rules except for the last one. I think momentum wise and just the, the build up. Sometimes the the timeout is anticlimactic. Rutgers has done more than hold their own at the face off X. They've won a higher percentage. Dehenio has been outstanding, but it's been a little bit of a flip from what happened with Rutgers last week. They haven't been as strong on some of the ground balls or turning those possessions into scoring opportunities. North Carolina gets the first possession of this overtime period. And there's the timeout from Joe Bresci. Timeout, North Carolina. So you get a timeout, but would you have called it, or would you, or do you keep uh, Rutgers on their heels a little bit there? Yeah, because, you know, you have you have Marr, 31 in white, who's defensive midi. Get your horses out there. Get your matchups. Get into your six-on-six -six set. I mean, that, that's where Carolina is just magical, right? right? They've been magical all season long. They don't need to run up and down the field to, to put up but 18 you, goals. But here's the thing. If you have four minutes... What? You can do that on your substitution anyways. You could save the timeout in case you really need it in a desperate situation. I, I understand where you're coming from, but you, you can t never take a timeout to the bus, right? Okay. You never take a timeout to the bus with you. So if, if you have it, you might never get the ball again. That's the way I look at it. And there Down is ball Matt one Wright. By Matt yep. Wright, yeah. Yeah, Matt Wright is, has been a force for Carolina all season long. Tucci's come up huge in terms of winning the initial draw, and Matt Wright, 20 in white, is a fearless competitor. Guy in between the lines that if you watch Carolina all season long, he's always where the ball is. Okay, so Freshy called a timeout at the end of regulation, started the ball in number four's stick, didn't even get a shot on goal. Let's see if it ends up being a little bit differently this time around. 
Well, it's a little different now where you, you don't have to go right away with four, yep. white and gray. You, you can get into your flow offensively. And this is why they're starting yep. them off ball, right? Yes. Whereas with 19 seconds left in the fourth quarter, it's, it's go time. Lance Tillman, four goals today for number zero. And Chris Gray. On Russo. Russo just goes right through that pick from Herbert. That was a big-time collision. Russo is on Camus, so you're going to have to slide to him, and they do. Anderson working on Rawl. Anderson spins to his feet. Just couldn't get enough on it to beat Kirst. UNC shot by number 21, Justin Anderson, the same by Colin. Rutgers and Camus looking to go quickly. Anderson, who was just shaken up, gets back, though. Little French Kowiak. Now look at this job by Gray. Loose ball. It goes out of bounds. Big call here by the officials, and it goes to North Carolina. Unreal hustle by Chris Gray. The awareness to know that he had numbers in a guy back on the offensive zone to play the opposite side. And another injury here by Rutgers. This looks like it's Connor Kirst. He comes up shaken up a little bit right by the Rutgers bench. But Breck using this opportunity to have a word or two with the officials. The two plays, one by Justin Anderson late in the fourth, and then Gray, who goes over the midline, communicates with his team to have a guy stay in the offensive zone because you need three guys back there to chase the ball. It's unbelievable. What a hustle by Chris Gray. Yeah, I think Breck's communication with the officials was that he was trying to call a timeout when Kirst was under duress. Didn't get it. Now the task at hand for the Eels to get this clear successfully and set up on offense. Connor Marr does that. McCarthy over to Cole Herbert. Terry. Gray inside shot. Oh boy. Nikki Solomon. When Gray has the ball, like mid dodge, his ability to feed is, is off the charts, right? Like it's a fraction of a second. He's speed ready. Now Tillman, look at the speed. Perry. McCarthy has some room. Now he'll shoot and score the game winner. right there gave his heart and his soul to Rutgers lacrosse in 2021 and his play is the reason they were in this moment Colin Kirst was spectacular nothing he could have done on that McCarthy game winner but this possession never happens unless your best player and your superstar comes up with a crazy tight play in the middle of the field. Chris Gray goes over the midline and makes not one, but two huge checks, which allows the Heels offense to get a look from the fifth year grad transfer from Princeton. Connor McCarthy, the hesitation, the patience, and the extra couple steps allows him to beat Colin Kirst, because right away, when he caught that, if he went to shoot, Chris, I'm convinced there was too much going on in the middle of the field right there. Could have been a deflection, the little pump fake, the hesitation, and the placement on a righty goalie is off the hook. Got popped by Tommy Coyne, too, as you see the reaction from the North Carolina bench. Huge moment. 
And then the deflation. Look at Brian Brecht. We talked to him so many times this year. We know what he has put into this program and puts in on a daily basis. And to come so close to your first championship weekend. Coach Bresci showing the love, and why not? Connor McCarthy is our Capital One player of the game with the overtime winner. Clark, we saw it today with this team. The depth really shone through, whether it was Tillman in four goals, Trippy, McCarthy with a couple of goals. I mean, they really came to the fore. Precisely to win this game without Chris Gray scoring a goal. Tanner Cook on the sideline. Complimentary pieces. Get the heels back to championship weekend for the first time since 2016. When a Chris Cloutier game winner against Maryland iced it for Carolina. Gave them their first national championship since 1991. The heels, the number one seed. They get another crack at Virginia, Chris. Half of championship weekend is now filled. We'll find out who wins the other half and fills it out tomorrow in South Bend. I hope you and Anish have half the excitement we had in this game. It was unbelievable. For Paul Carcaterra and our entire crew, I'm Chris Cotter. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow in South Bend.